How's it going, everybody? My name is Adam Labar. Today, join with Mark Navarro, who fights at BKB 16 against Sean George. Mark, how's it going? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. I appreciate you taking some time out of your busy day to chat. I know it's a little bit later uh, right now over there in the UK. You're a little bit ahead in regards to time, so thank you very much for that. No problem, mate. No problem. It's actually been a rest day for me. Oh, has it? So, uh... Yes, resting today and tomorrow. I'm right ahead of schedule. I'm feeling good, so I took two days off. Um, I've just been relaxing, actually. Okay, oh, well, awesome. Um, now, kind of jumping into things, you last competed at BKB15. You came up a little bit short, but what was it like being in the ring, having kickboxing experience, but now boxing with no gloves? What was that like? So as far as a kickboxing experience, if, if anybody, if any, anyone that's followed my career from the start or not, even though I was a kickboxing champion, I was pretty much going in there and fighting um, as, as a boxer, going in there, being very aggressive, staying close to these guys that could kick and working on the inside. And uh, don't get me wrong, it took a lot of damage. It took a lot of damage doing that, but the most part, I won, I won my fights. And I was a European WKA European champion, Scottish champion, um, a Dynamite Fight Series champion. So I've done pretty well in the kickboxing, but I was never really a kickboxer. And anybody that's followed my career will always see that. I started off amateur boxing. I kind of moved into the K1. I enjoyed it because it was such an aggressive style of fighting, but I always knew I was, I was better with my hands. Now, what did it feel like going from that into and and again you started off with amateur boxing but now doing boxing with no gloves under bkb honestly it just felt so natural for me um the reason i got into boxing in the first place i started amateur boxing at 12 years old but since i was a young kid i was always fighting in the street and i found i was good at it and i really enjoyed it so i, tried, I just channeled my energy into boxing um even when i started boxing at 12 years old i was still maybe fighting on the street up until i was around 22 years old so I just felt pretty natural to me, to be honest. In in your last fight, you fought Tyler Goodjohn. Again, you, you suffered a loss. Um, but from that, have you made any adjustments in regards to your training for your up-and-coming fight? Any so takeaways as, from as, that fight? As, as far as adjustments, right? I don't mean to keep barking on or crying on about this, right? But everybody that follows my career will see how much I train. I've got a gym in Dundee in Scotland. I'm in there full-time with my own gym. If I'm not in someone I'm training myself and that's just been the way it is for the last few years now I had BKB 15 I fought Johnny Lawson now straight after the fight I asked Joe to, to get me Tyler Arn good John now at first I never thought they were going to give me him um, it was only my first fight I'd only just won my first fight and just just meet my best I went out there and said listen I want Tyler what happened the day later they were on the phone telling us that the fight's maybe getting put out there the next day well I'd already spent thousands of pounds I was going to be travelling the whole of South America so, me at my best, when I stepped off the plane in San Jose, the guys, uh, the guys had released the biggest fight in my career, and I only knew about it. I only knew it was happening when I stepped on the plane. It was a six weeks trip I was away for. And most guys would have, would, wouldn't have took the fight, but I knew straight away, me at my best, I couldn't, I couldn't say no. It was the biggest fight in my career, the biggest, uh, the biggest um, chance as well, you know what I mean? So I couldn't say no. So I took the fight knowing it was going to be tough, trying to train out there on my own. I was trying to train out there, I was getting runs and stuff in, but I knew, I'm, I'm no daft, I knew I was not getting enough training. Training when I was out there. So I came home um, 10 days early, which left me three weeks till the fight. The first day I got home, I fell ill, and I was, I mean, really, really ill. For two weeks, I was lying up in my bed. So uh, and as far as adjustments and that, I'm back, I'm training hard, I'm feeling great, because I'm going to see the best. If people got excited about that last fight, and I never even sparred, one round of sparring, I was uh, I was only about 20, 30%. I was just fighting on in instinct. So if people are excited to see that last fight, they're, they're going to be in for a treat this fight. Now, more recently on social media, you and Eric Olsen, who will also be competing at BKB16, he's filling in as a replacement for Stuart Maddox against Greg Main, have gone back and forth on social media. Now, I just actually spoke with Eric, and he says that he actually likes you. But the reason he's eyeing this fight is he feels that him and, and you are very similar, and he says that there's only room for one. Uh, what are your thoughts yeah. on him, and where, where did all this start? 
I think Eric's obsessed with me, to be honest. That's what I think. Do, I really do. Do it's, you, it's do you know why? The way that it all... Do you know why? I just think because I've came on the scene and I'm... Um, like he says, we're both outspoken and stuff. I'm outspoken, but guess what? Um, I'm coming up with the goods and putting on really good performances in the ring as well. So that, that that's the difference. Eric could talk a good fight, but he can't fight. He can't fight sleep. It's as simple as that. Now, is this a he fight on his own? Is is that a fight Sorry. that you're eyeing after your BKB 16 fight later this month on March 30th? So, so first thing first, I've got a British title title fight to, to worry about, but. I've told, obviously, I do to Jim and Joe. If, if Jim and Joe tell me that they want me to fight Eric, if he gets down to 80 kilos, bearing in mind I'm now fighting at 74.5 kilos, Eric's in dreamland, to be honest. He's never going to lose the weight. But if he somehow manages to cut off an arm and a leg, stop eating cheeseburgers, and trains like a professional, and gets to the weight, then the fight could happen. I'll fight any man. Now, like you just said, you're fighting for a British title at BKB16 and moving a, a little bit uh, and focusing more on that. What are your thoughts on your opponent, Sean George, uh, in your up-and-coming fight? My thoughts on Sean is that Sean's, Sean's very, very, very... He's a, he's, Sean's a super fat guy. He's just naturally super fat. Um, he's very, very tough as well. He's just as tough as me. Um, the, difference with title, the difference with Sean... And my last opponent is, I'm going to see Sean's shots coming. I'm going to have more time. He's got longer arms. I'm going to see them coming a bit more. Um, he, he's a good boxer. He's, he's a good fighter. But I'm better. It's as simple as that. I'll be taking that belt over the day. You more recently went on to your social media, uh, and, I'm, and I'm referencing your Facebook, and you said that had you been given the opportunity to be a footballer, a musician, an astronaut, or in bare knuckle mm -hmm. boxing, you'd go the route of BKB. Why is that? Why is that? I've told you because from, from a young age, I have been. I've just loved fighting. Um, I've, I've I've just fought on the streets. I've fought in the ring. I fought everywhere I went, and I just I just love it. For a young boy, I was growing up. I was reading books. The governor Lenny McLean. At a young age, I was calling myself the governor on MSN. MSN Messenger at thirteen years old. Instead of having Mark Navarro, I called myself the governor after Lenny McLean. Used to come home from school every night, put on YouTube and watch the bare knuckle fights. And I used to think to myself back then, I cannot believe that you're not allowed to fight bare knuckle nowadays. I used to get upset about it. Um, and then, then I was keeping, I was keeping, I've been, I've been watching what's been happening over the last few years. I even told the guys at BKB this. It was only about three, four years ago. I went and had a meeting with guys up in, in Scotland about switching over to the BKB, and, and I left, left the. Uh, I left the meeting just thinking, it's not the right time to do that. This is not the right guys to sign for. And, and I'm so happy that I've done that because look what's happened. Three years down the line, BKB, Jim and Joe have now got it mainstream, getting watched by millions of people all over the world. You've just seen that last fight on YouTube. Now, my, my highest viewed fight on YouTube is 25,000 views, and that was against Ian Martell. I'm not sure if you've seen that. It was an absolute yep. war. 25,000 views. It's been on five years. That's still a decent amount of views for a fight, right? Within two weeks, the, the, the fight with Tyler, and again, I've read all the comments and that, people thought, thought, thought I thought brilliant, Rick. And, and, and I'm telling you, I never had a camp for it. I was out in the jungle, I spent that much money, I was, I, I, I was six weeks in the, in the jungle, I never trained, so obviously I'm feeling confident for this fight. I'm back, I'm training very, very hard, so I'm feeling good. Now, you say that you're feeling good, training's going well, you're in shape, you're ahead of schedule. Um, your, your love for bare knuckle boxing has been a lifetime experience. Leading into March 30th, what can we expect from you at BKB16 against Sean George? It's just exactly the same as every fight. I go in there with nothing, but there's no fear in me. I go in there with nothing but excitement, and and it's just, just going to be a war. Like I said, it's, I'll, I just go in there and do what I do. I just, I'll just fight. It's just going to be a war. I train my hardest every single day, and... Go back and look on YouTube, man. Every fight I'm in, it's, it's generally a war. So that's that. I'm not going to be making no predictions here because Sean George is a tough, tough guy, but I'm feeling really confident. And he's only wanting this and that. What does he mean by fights? We've just had the biggest, the, the most viewed bare knuckle fight in BKB history. 
He knows the situation. He knows I was out there and I was stuck in Costa Rica. He knew the situation, by the way. Don't let him kid you on. Don't let him fool you. He knows how important it is to hear your team around you, your, your food, your training, everything. He was sending me pictures every day on Instagram, fucking with his body and shit, trying to, trying to put me off the fight. And look, I never even had a camp and I still chased him to the end. So is, is that a fight you'd like a rematch for, you versus Tyler Goodjohn? See, to be honest, once I get that belt, it's down to them to come and get the belt off me. I do not care who they put in front of me, I will fight them. 